The Flintstone family is back. And Fred Flintstone has a new hobby, fishing. But things don't go quite as he expects. The Flintstones in Fred the Fisherman. Fred watched from the window as the postman turned into the street where the Flintstones lived. As soon as he saw him, Fred rushed outside. Have you got any parcels for me? Fred Flintstone! He shouted. The postman handed him two packages. One was long and thin. The other was small and square. Fred hurried round the end of the house... And out of sight of prying eyes, he undid the wrapping. At last, he cried. yabba dabba do The long, thin package contained three pieces of wood. When Fred fixed them together, they made a slender fishing rod. In the square package, there was a box and an instruction book. Fred tipped out the contents of the box. There was a spool of fishing line, hooks of different sizes, a bundle of brightly colored feathers and a lot of odds and ends that Fred didn't recognize. Fred tiptoed round to the kitchen window to see what Wilma was doing. She was speaking on the telephone to Betty Rubble. Good, said Fred to himself. She won't bother me for at least an hour. Then he went back to his new fishing tackle and sat down. Soon he was hard at work, mumbling to himself and checking the book at each step. At last he sat back, very pleased. Hi there, Fred, came Barney's cheery voice. He was leaning over the garden wall. What are you doing? Hello, Barney, Fred called back. You are witnessing a great moment in the life of F. Flintstone Esquire. What do you think this is? It looks like a fishing rod to me, said Barney. Quite, said Fred, but not just any fishing rod. I have taken up fly fishing. What do you do with the flies once you've caught them? Asked Barney. They're a bit small to eat. I will use flies to catch fish, said Fred. I made this fly myself. Flintstone fancy, I'm going to call it. What sort of fish do you think this will catch? Stupid ones, if they think that's a fly, replied Barney. I'm a bent pin and worm man myself. Bent pin and worm, said Fred scornfully. Come fishing with me and you'll see a real fishing. Wilma came to join them. We'll all go, she said. Betty, too. We'll have a picnic. Bam Bam and Pebbles will like that. That's all right by me, said Fred. Just remember one thing. Fly fishing is a delicate art. I don't want people running and jumping and shouting up and down the riverbank. And so it was arranged that the Flintstones and the Rubbles would have a riverside picnic on the following Saturday. As soon as breakfast was over on Saturday, Fred and Barney loaded their families into their cars and set off for the river. It was a tight squeeze, because the food for the picnic took up a lot of room. Fred was afraid his precious fly rod might be damaged, and he watched anxiously as everyone got in. Dino wanted to come too, but there was really no room for him. Fred promised to bring him home some extra special fish for his supper. The picnic place was a sunny clearing a little way from the river. Betty and Wilma unloaded the picnic things, and Fred and Barney set off for the river to fish. Bam Bam wanted to go, too. The Pebbles had a new skipping rope, however, and Wilma and Betty said that all the girls would stay behind and have fun together. So Bam Bam trotted after Fred and Barney. Barney and Bam Bam sat on a log and watched Fred get ready. Frowning and with his tongue sticking out, Fred fastened his Flintstone fancy artificial fly to the end of the fishing line. Then he stepped up to the water's edge. He waggled the rod back and forward a few times above his head. Then he gave a quick flick. The line whirled round and over his head, and he gave a loud yell. The hook had caught him by the ear. Fred muttered for a moment, rubbing his sore ear. Then he tried again. The line didn't fly over his head this time. It just hung from the end of the rod in a great tangle. Fred began to undo the tangle carefully. Can I help, Fred? Asked Barney. Yes, said Fred. By going somewhere else. I can't concentrate with people watching. Come on, Bam Bam, said Barney. We'll find our own place and leave Uncle Fred in peace. I've got a can of lovely worms.
Fred waited until their footsteps faded in the distance. Then he finished straightening out the tangled line, took out his instruction book, and began reading. He held it in one hand and his fishing rod in the other. He flicked and waved the rod above his head, checking the book as he did so. Then he put the book away and turned back to the river. Taking a deep breath, Fred flicked his line once more. And it was perfect, just like the diagram in the book. There was only one thing wrong. Instead of flying straight out and landing in the water, the Flintstone fancy caught the leaves of an overhanging tree branch and stuck fast. Barney, meantime, was having great luck. Bam Bam jumped up and down and shouted with delight every time Barney landed another fat fish. I think that's enough, Bam Bam, said Barney. Let's go see how Uncle Fred is doing. Whatever are you doing, Fred? cried Barney as they came along the bank. Fred was clinging to the tree branch, trying to reach the line caught in the leaves. The branch was bending, and Fred was slipping. Don't move, Fred, cried Barney. He dashed back to the picnic place. Wilma and Betty were setting out the food for the picnic when Barney rushed up and grabbed Pebble's skipping rope. I need this for Fred, he shouted and ran off again. Don't tell me that Fred's given up fishing for skipping, said Wilma. I think we'd better go and see what he's up to. They arrived in time to see Barney climbing up to tie one end of the skipping rope to the tip of a long, slender tree growing out over the river. He threw the other end to Fred. Tie it round you, Fred! He cried. It's a safety line! Thanks! gasped Fred, struggling to tie the rope with one hand. At last he managed it, but at the same moment he lost his balance and fell off the branch. Oh, dear! cried Wilma. He'll get wet! But he didn't. With a jerk, he stopped, bobbing up and down over the water as the tree sprang up and down with his weight. I'm coming, Fred! cried Barney. Hang on! There's nothing else I can do, Fred shouted back. But before Barney could do anything, Bam Bam was there first. His Uncle Fred was in trouble. He would save him. Bam Bam wrapped his small arms around the tree and heaved, and Fred found himself whipped into the air. Then back again as the tree sprang back. But Bam Bam wasn't giving up. The tree whipped to and fro. Fred bounced up and down. Hi, Fred, shouted Barney. You look like a worm on a fishing line. Just as Barney spoke, an enormous fish leapt from the river, snapping at Fred. Fred let out a yell, and Bam Bam heaved again, and the fish leapt again. Maybe the fish is just being playful, said Betty. Licking its lips, cried Fred. Do something, somebody! At that moment, Barney's knot came loose from the tree. As the fish made another grab, Fred landed on it, and they both disappeared with an enormous splash. Bam Bam picked up the loose end of the skipping rope, put it over his shoulder, and dragged Fred into shallow water. Fred was clutching the fish. The others helped him out of the river and up the bank. By this time, the Flintstone fancy had come free from the leaves. Fred gathered up his fishing tackle, then he and Barney between them carried the fish back to the picnic place. As the Flintstones and the Rubbles sat down to their picnic, Barney said, Well, Fred, I don't mind admitting that fish of yours is bigger than any fish I ever caught. I'm so proud of you, said Wilma. Fred had fully recovered from his adventure. He held up the Flintstone fancy artificial fly. Fly fishing is an art, a science. It's not for just anybody. Fred, old buddy, said Barney, I'm going to stick to my bent pin and can of worms. As far as I can see, fly fishing is far too dangerous. <laughs>